Okay, it's time to talk order of operations. This is one of my most favorite things to do in math. I know that's so geeky, but I don't care. It's one of my favorites. It just makes me happy to do because it gives you a nice, neat answer. So this should be a little bit familiar to you already, but just to recap, we use this acronym PEMDAS, and if you have trouble remembering that, you can use that phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to remember that um, order of operations. So what each of these means is P stands for parentheses, so you always do parentheses first if they're there. E stands for exponent, so no matter what the exponent is, if, the, if you have one, that's what you would do next, so parentheses first, then exponents. Then, uh, M is multiplication, D is division, and they're grouped together because you don't necessarily do multiplication before division. You do them from left to right. So let's say you have both multiplication and division in a problem. Then whichever one starts on the left, whichever one you come to as you read the problem left to right, that's what you choose to do first. Then you'll get to the next part after that. So you do multiplication and division left to right. Remember how we can use the star or the dot or the X to represent multiplication? Um, and then you got your division sign, so we do that left to right. The last ones are addition and subtraction, and they're also grouped just like multiplication and division was, because again, you do them left to right. You don't necessarily do addition before subtraction or vice versa. It's whatever happens left to right in the problem. Okay, so those are some tips you can use to help remember, um, but let's go ahead and get started with some practice. So I'm going to do the first problem with you on the left. So go ahead and have your pencil ready to go. I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this uh, most efficiently. So we don't just do the problem beginning left to right. we got to follow those rules of PEMDAS, the please, uh, excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we're going to start with parentheses because that's what we have first. So I like to underline or at least kind of focus in on the part that I'm looking at, because then I just rewrite the rest of the problem. So the only actual math part I'm doing is what's in parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite 12 minus 3 times, then I can do the 1 plus 2 to get 3, and then write minus 1. So that's what I did for this last part. So you can see what I underlined matches the number, the new number I have, and everything else I just re wrote. Okay, you got to do that. You can't just do the math off to the side. You're going to lose track of what goes where. Okay, so I really encourage you, you have to do one step at a time and rewrite the problem as you go. It'll get smaller and smaller, but you have to rewrite it. You absolutely have to. If you do it this way, you're not going to make a mistake. Okay, other than you need to also follow the directions too. All right, so now when I look, I've got 12 minus 3 times 3 minus 1. So I've got subtraction and multiplication. Well, I know I'm going to do multiplication first, so I underlined the 3 times 3. I'm completely ignoring the 12 and the 1. So I know 3 times 3 is 9, but I'm going to rewrite the problem. So I've got 12 minus 9 minus 1. See, I rewrote the problem, but I'm not going to use the 3s anymore because those turned into the 9 by doing 3 times 3. Okay, now my next part, I've got... 12 minus 9 minus 1, so I have only subtraction left, so I'm just going to do it from left to right. 12 minus 9 is 3, so I underlined that part to focus in on. And now I just have 3 minus 1. Notice how I still rewrote it, even though it was only a little bit left. So 3 minus 1, 2, that's my answer. And I really prefer if you circle at the end, because you'll see I've got a ton of numbers in here. Um, and so I, it's hard to sometimes find our answer, so either uh, you don't necessarily need to rewrite it, just circle it or put a box around it or something like that. Okay, but do you see how nice and neat it is as I'm going down? I know you're rewriting the numbers a lot, but it's going to help you so much. Trust me from experience, okay? So what I want you to do now is go ahead and give this next problem a try. So pause your video, give it a go. When you're ready, unpause and I'll walk you through my work step by step. So go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Okay, I hope you paused your video and that you went through those step by step. So I'm going to show you what I did. I'll explain it. So we start with parentheses first. So I did 6 divided by 3 gave me 2. Okay, and notice again, I rewrote the problem. You have to have to do that. If you didn't, fix your work, please. Okay, so then when I have my next row, so it's kind of like a new problem each time that you're looking at. So now I notice I have exponents. 2 to the third power, so that means 2 times 2 times 2, which gives me 8, because 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Do not have 6 here, you know 2 to the third is not 6, it's 8, okay, you got to get that down. So now I have 
8 plus 8 minus 2. I have addition and subtraction. So I'm not doing addition first because it's addition. I'm doing it first because when I move left to right, that's what I come to first is addition. So 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 minus 2 gives me 14. And so that's my answer. I hope you got the same. If not, pause, go back, take a closer look. Okay, but if you're ready, move on to the next page, which is an error analysis. So you have two students that both solved the same problem. However, one student solved it correctly, one student did not. So you need to figure out who solved it correctly, put a star next to the student who solved the problem correctly. Whoever solved it incorrectly, you need to circle the error they made. So what section did they get wrong? And then explain it. So you're not explaining for both, you're just explaining for whichever one is incorrect. Then change your uh, color to orange on the tracking page so you can get a teacher signature. If you need more practice after this, or if you have trouble with the error analysis, I might suggest to you to try the optional IXL. It is a fifth grade one, but it's really good practicing the order of operations, at least some simple ones. So please feel free to use that IXL as needed, okay? But go ahead and start your error analysis.